Hello and welcome back to The Great Unexplained Debate. This is a show that is filmed as live, it's unedited. What we say, you see. We're asking very difficult questions and getting some very plain, straightforward answers. Today with me on, uh, on this show, we have Steve Mara, the uh, chairman of one of the longest associations into the paranormal, the Manchester Association of the Paranormal Investigation and Training. Thank you very much for coming back. Oh, um, we also have uh, Dave Sadler, who is the founder of the Unknown Phenomena Investigation Association, which again has been around for some time. Yeah. And thank you very much for joining us. And again, uh, to my left, we have Fred Batt, who is a demonologist, witchcraft expert, paranormal investigator, an all round nice guy. Thank you very much for coming back. Nice, um, nice cross, by the way. Well, that covers all religions, so I'm safe. Oh, does it? Yeah, <laughs> that's got everything. It's well, Illuminati cross. Well, you don't want to be, you don't want to be kept out of heaven on a technicality, <laughs> do you? Um, right, I think to, to start with, what I'd like to do is, is talk about aliens um, and this very broad um, aspect of, of the paranormal. Um, I know we've touched on it before in the year, in Duke, yeah, but yeah. we've had so many emails and stuff coming in saying well, they, people want to know more and more and more. And in all honesty, it's something that we would probably couldn't cover if we did an well, hour is, every it's a, day. It's a huge subject, um, the, whole, the whole theory regarding alien contact. I mean, you, you've got the, the scientific side of it, which is SETI, which is a search for extraterrestrial intelligence. Um, and then, um, of course, there's the, the sort of research side of it, such as the ancient uh, astronaut theories. Uh, you've got the modern UFO phenomena, you know, and uh, the historical documents. So it, it sort of splits into sort of four different categories. Um, those go off at a tangent, of course, into alien abduction on one side and crop circle phenomena on the other. There's, I, we don't believe there's any, anything to do with crop circles, by the way. That was all down to, apparently, in 1980, Farmer John Skull um, down south found a um, 160-metre impression in his crop one day. Just round, nothing, nothing special. Uh, and unfortunately, the guy, first guys to attend that were two UFO investigators and said, oh God, something's landed. <laughs> and of course, since then, it's always been UFO orientated. Um, I don't think there's any evidence to support that as well. As well. But, this is, this, <laughs> but isn't this is the case with a lot of stuff, which we'll go on later about, uh, talk about abductions and stuff. Um, but it always seems to be that there seems to be one iconic thing, whether it be that, and everyone yeah. else seems to jump on almost a bandwagon. And then there's, there's so much more after that, more people see things, more people are witnesses. I have to, I'm, the, 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 the crop circle thing, I think it's the bizarre thing. But Dave, what's, what's your, um, what's your what, do you, what do you believe about aliens? Do you believe they are there? Do you believe they come to the earth? Do you believe they can contact us directly? Well, first and foremost, Carl, it's, it's a vast, wide open universe. There's many planets being found on a, not, this, not, not so much regular basis, but there's planets similar to earth being found on a regular basis. It'd be um, stupid of me to suggest otherwise that there's no such thing as life on other planets. If it's coming here to visit, is another matter. I mean, most of the things out there, I believe people are misidentifying and misinterpreting. And a lot of things in relation to the alien abduction scenario is down, I think, think personally, to simply psychology and uh, sleep disorders and such like. Mm. That's, that's actually strange because that's something I, want to, I do want to look into later on because uh, I've been looking into some... Uh, research about sleep disorders and alien abductions. Now, Fred, I know we've asked before, but what, what, just, just um, enlighten us again. What, what's your standpoint on, on, on aliens? Well, I think there's got to be other life out there somewhere. We're just one universe. There's got to be more beyond that. And there's bound to be more life than just us. And also, mm -hmm. if you go back, as I said before, the way the Aztecs and the Egyptians laid out things, so they could only be seen from above, and there were certain patterns and things like this. There's got to be more to it than we know. There's got to be something there. And I think people have come here, yeah, I really do. Do you think they come here as regularly as would, 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 would be? Well, the, it's very much different. I've said this before, it's, it's very much different in this country. It very rarely gets reported now, the alien abduction phenomena, as you can well imagine. Why is that? Are we bored of it? Are we just no, no, no. It had thing? its phase during the 80s. I mean, when the, um, the X-Files was out on TV, everybody wanted to be an investigator. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, we were basically confronted with thousands and thousands of people, literally, who, uh, who thought that uh, investigation was just a matter of just running around, the, you know, running around the country and no paperwork, no actual hard work involved, but it's, it's, that's quite the opposite. Mm -hmm. And uh, it had a phase where people were saying that they were going through the abduction f um, phenomena, the incidents were taking place, and it happens around about, sort of from 1980 to around about 89, 90. Right. 
Uh, and those 10 years, um, we investigated more of the alien abduction phenomena than most of the UFO experiences. Um, Nowadays, it doesn't get reported so much because it was a phase. You know, it's what people uh, go through. The, the media, you know, get people involved in in certain subjects, and uh, it heightens the the perceptions in, in, in regards to them thinking they've had these experiences in some cases. And mm. it's quite. A, it's there, there was one in Oxford, wasn't there, which was. Uh, very well reported and discovered by a police officer, I think it was, and yeah, he saw something yeah. coming down. And there was, uh, well, the Alan Godfrey case, probably referring to, uh, which took place in Todmorden. Um, now, I've reinvestigated that case quite thoroughly, and we found 123 discrepancies. 123? 123. 123 discrepancies. Is that a careless investigation on the part of the, the original them, investigators? Yeah, some of them are. Well, it's just how the story's changed. I mean, it's, it's, some of them are as simple as you take the first information which came out by his interview with the media, where he claimed he was abducted by lamp headed robots, uh, a guy called Josef and a funny looking dog. This is, this that is Josef. And yeah. his dog. You can't trust him. Oh no, he's a terrible, <laughs> a terrible guy, gets around. And, and of course, as the, as the case goes on, the stories progress, and now we're at a stage where he got abducted by little grey aliens. So you can see how... Th that's the simplest of things. That's before anybody needs any investigative skills. You know, that's just there to read in the media, his interviews. And when we investigated the case, we found that on, on, on location, there were lots of other things sort of. He was investigating that night, the disappearance and reappearance of cows. Well, apparently, there's just, just, just cows got out, um, out, out, out in the field and got, and got through into some of the back gardens. That's all it was, but it was, again, twisted the story. It's actually strange yeah. because, it's funny because this morning, we, we've, we've, got, um, we've got a couple of, couple of horses and we've got one that's, that's this, this has got a connection, by the way. One's got a little bit of laminitis, so we've got the, the small horse in, in another field where there's not a great deal of grass mm. and the other horse is in the, the other field where there's got quite a bit of grass and this morning um, Yvette went down to, to look at the horses and the little one is in the field with the big one and if I wanted to go down to that point I could actually yeah. the, the gates are all shut there, there's no way can that horse yeah it's only a tiny horse yeah. it can't jump over a gate mm. I could actually come down and, and I could be sitting here saying but that's got to be, if I believe that, because that's got to be aliens. Something has moved the horse. It didn't, because yeah, someone's probably just left the gate open it's and then shut it up. Very easy. If you're, if you're in that mindset and you can, you can look for those things and, and basically publicise them as so. There are, in fact, you know, there, I believe there are unusual experiences. There was a spate of incidents in 1977 um, in Ripperstone, which is a place down, um, down south in, in Wales. And um, numerous people were being plagued by UFO sightings and strange beings and all sorts of things happened over a period of a couple of years. And on one particular incident, uh, a farmer was putting his cattle away at night and he'd locked the gate and just as he was locking it, he heard the phone ringing. So he, he hurried, well, fastened the lock, ran off to get to the phone, picked up the phone and it was another farmer, it was his neighbour basically, he lived about four miles away. And he said, well, I've got three of your cow, cows here. You know, and he said, well, that's impossible, I've just, I've just locked them up. I said, in fact, I, I had to run to the phone to, to get it, you know. And, and, of course, he went back to check, and three of his cattle were missing. But he wasn't, they weren't, apparently, at the time he was... Um, and these things were, were sort of... It, was, it, it happened of widespread over about uh, six or seven miles, and numerous people reported the same things. So, very strange. Very but awesome. this, is, this is the one thing that we, you, you tend to get with this. It's, it's almost your own perception of what you think has happened and what has happened. Um, but we're going to come back after the break and continue with this because we've got to go away for a couple of seconds. Uh, please uh, don't leave us and join us in a couple of minutes.